Hello everyone and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be having a look at time zone calculations briefly. So we're going to be looking at some of the steps that we need to remember when dealing with time zone calculations. We're going to start with your basic calculations, then we're going to move to um, calculations with DST. Now, the first step you need to remember is to determine or identify the countries that you are working with. Step number two is then to identify the time zones of the countries that you are working with, followed by establishing known time. Now, known time is generally given to you in the scenario. And step number four would then be to identify the time difference between the countries that you are working with. So just to recap, step number one, we identify the countries that we are working with. Step number two is where we identify the time zones of the countries that we are working with. Step number three, you establish your known time. Step number four, you determine the time difference between the two countries that you are working with, followed by determining the direction of travel. Now, this is going to help us to know whether we are losing time or gaining time. In other words, are we going to be subtracting or are we going to be adding? And then step number six is where you then subtract or add the time difference from the known time and then you get your answer now with dst the steps basically stay the same throughout there's just one or two changes that we get to see so step number one we still identify the countries that we are working with followed by their time zones in other words we identify the time zones of the countries that we are working with but then step number three changes when we are dealing with DST. I always tell my learners that once you have identified the country and you've written down their time zones, then next to the time zones of the countries, if one of the two countries practices DST, then in brackets you just write plus one hour DST. Now I know that some people prefer adding DST right at the end of the calculation. I prefer doing it right in the um, beginning. So you identify the countries you are working with, you identify the time zones, and then you identify which of the two countries is practicing DST. And then you just put that in brackets there. Then you establish known time. Again, this is given or generally given in the um, in the scenario so you just have to read and check step number four is where we determine the time difference between the two countries and then we determine that the the direction of travel whether we are subtracting or adding the time difference so the last step again is where we get to um, subtract or add the time difference and then get our answer. I see I've made an error that I have two number fours. So with DST, we have six steps. So the very last step is where we subtract or add our time difference. Okay, now if we look at the very last category um, when dealing with time zones, you'll see that it is calculations with DST and flying time. Basically things stay the same again, there's just one or two things that change here. We're still going to identify or determine um, the countries that we're working with, we're going to identify their time zones, we're going to add DST. So we're going to check which of the two countries that we are working with practices DST and then in brackets, like we said before, we're going to say plus one hour DST. Now, please remember that DST will never be minus one hour or plus two hours. It'll always be plus one hour. Once we've done that, we establish known time by just reading through the scenario and checking if known time is given to us. Then step four is where we determine the time difference between the two countries that we are working with. We proceed to check the direction of travel. So once we read the scenario, we, we, are, we are able to um, determine the direction of travel. Now step five is where things get interesting. If we are determining the arrival time, in other words, we don't know what the arrival time is. We've been given the departure time. 
So if we are determining the arrival time, then we're going to add our flying time in order to get our answer. But if we are trying to determine the departure time, in other words, what time did this person leave? Say for instance, they've given us the arrival time, but we don't know what time they left. So then in that particular situation, we are going to subtract the flying time um, in order to determine what the answer is going to be. If we look at this example, this was taken from the 2022 Tourism June exam. And um, we're going to leave question 2.2.1 in all of these. And we're just going to focus here on question 2.2. Now they tell us that the return flight lands at 1700 hours on the 15th of November 2021. So they've given us the known time. That is then our known time. So they say calculate the time and date that she departs South Africa. Now we're going to follow the steps that we were talking about. So we're going to identify the countries that we are working with. So we've got Madrid and we've got South Africa. Where did we get that? If we look over here, you've got Madrid and you've got Cape Town, South Africa. So we identify the countries that we are working with, Madrid and Cape Town. We proceed to identify the time zones of the countries that we are working with. In this case, Madrid is plus one and South Africa is plus two. You will never be expected to know these off by heart. You will always be given a time zone map where you are able to um, identify these. As we said before, our known time is 1700 hours. Please be careful how you write your time when dealing with time zones. There's only one acceptable way and it is this way, the 24 hour clock system. Now, once we have done all of these, if we determine our time difference, it is one hour. Therefore, we're going to take the 1700 hours and we're going to add that one hour. So that in South Africa, it is 1800 hours when it is 1700 hours in Madrid. So after we have done that, we determine our direction of travel. And in this particular case, if you read the scenario and the question paper and all that, um, the question in particular, um, then we, 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 we determine that our direction of travel is west. In other words, we're going to be subtracting or minusing. So our, in order to determine then our departure time, we can, we're going to take the 1800 hours, which is the known time in South Africa. And then we're going to subtract the 11 hours. Now, why are we subtracting? Because we are trying to determine the departure time. If we were trying to determine the arrival time, then we would add the flying time. So then in this particular case, we say 1800 hours minus the 11 hours flying time and that takes us to or rather gives us an answer of 0700 hours on the 15th of November 2021 and that's it I hope this was helpful um, please do let me know in the comment section remember to just follow the steps and you will be good please remember to like comment subscribe and share all the best